Welcome, Peoria Notre Dame sports fans, to NDTV, our live streaming YouTube channel from Peoria Notre Dame High School. I'm Rob Kenny. I'm here with Matt Blackford. I'm happy to bring you this Big 12 Conference men's soccer game between your Peoria Notre Dame Irish and our visitors, Champagne Centennial, the Chargers. Matt, the Irish, defending state champions, off to a great start this year. Undefeated, rolling up the goals, not really conceding much on the defensive end. Is that the kind of start you want when you're defending? Uh, most definitely. You know, I think that there's been some very impressive wins by our by our boys, you know, in Indianapolis. I think uh, a, a good statement was made over the weekend as well within the, you know, the Tri-County area with the with the 5-0 decision at Washington as well. And I think that, uh, you know, I mean, they can't be complacent. You know, you've got to continue no. to try to get better every day. And I think, uh, you know, I've, I've noticed, I've, I've been out and kind of noticed some of their training and, you know, the Coach Bear's definitely not letting up on them, and they're they're getting after it every day and working hard to, to uh, get better. And I mean, that's what you got to do at this point. I mean, just don't want to plateau right now, and don't think they are. And I think there's a lot of things that they feel they got to work on, and and um, hopefully they can work some of that out today. It's nice to see, yeah, that win uh, at Washington. Big statement. Maybe win early in the season. You know, Washington's got a fine program. They're going to be around. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think that's it's a big deal just for just for a statement, but also to say, hey, this is where we are in the, in, when it comes to seating time as well in this area. Yeah, so. that's a really good point here. Come hear it through our microphones here. The wind literally picked up as soon as the national anthem was over. Probably picked up about 10 or 12, and not degrees, but uh, miles per hour. So we'll see how that affects the game. Irish rolling on the starting lineup here of Dimler in goal, and then Graham O'Donnell, Hudson Schuler, Mattarelli, Cal Burkett, freshman, get his first home start. Sebastian Salazar, Thatcher Hogan, Oliver, Nathan Oliver, and Teddy LaHood. Strong lineup. A little pressure, little pressure there by uh, Centennial here and get it in the back, kind of get behind us a little bit here. We had to just kind of clear it out of bounds, which is really uncharacteristic for us. As you said, this is the... Uh, Opening conference game for the Irish. Probably the only blemish on the uh, blotter last year for the Irish is they didn't win the conference championship. You know, yeah. that is one of the things that you, I think, you, you know, always like to do. Yeah, I mean, that's always something that you put up as a benchmark, you know, at the beginning of the year, like, hey, let's win conference, let's win a regional, you know, sectional, super sectional, move your way up to state, right? But, yep. um, you know, it's, it's, it's really not easy for us to, to win a, a conference titles everybody thinks it is I mean you're dealing with teams and, and schools that are three times bigger than us and you know we may not match up very well right now in the big 12 across the board so um, you know maybe something that that we really need to kind of look at as a school as we move forward about you know if this is a good fit for us but, yeah you know it's tough I mean it's it is there, there are certain sports that it, it bodes well for and they do okay with but you know um, it, it's just a it's a it's a tough tough road to hoe sometimes when you're dealing with teams that are you know, three times, four times bigger than you. And the Irish get a shot on goal there. Takes a deflection on the way through. And then uh, saved by the goalie. Strong hand pops it over. Didn't control it, but popped over the goal. And that was off of a free kick right outside the box. Kane Hudson played a square ball. I think it was Max Matarelli ran onto it. Or either Max or it was uh, Thatcher Hogan. They both got powerful right feet. Good to see the Irish. Put the first ball on frame. Pitch looks a little brown in a few spots here. A little bit. Early in the season, yeah. It's hot. It's been hot. You know, a patch right over there. Probably got that. That's a leak. Okay. Looks like. <laughs> That our annual leak from the irrigation gotta, system. You gotta have at least one a year, you know, that <laughs> tears up a little bit of area and you gotta oversee the crud out of it. But, you know, it's just, it'll, it'll be fine. Gotta play through the imperfections. Yeah, there aren't many out here. Nope. That's actually a good spell of uh, possession and pressure here. Excellent bit of work there by number 18. For the Chargers there, that's Nehemiah McKissick. Remember his name from last year. Just couldn't uh, couldn't find his uh, strike partner there with the pass. 
Ouch. Kitchik again there, bad giveaway by the Irish. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We don't want to make mistakes in the back like that. I mean, that's going to be, you know, hopefully we don't pay for it. You know, hopefully we can clear it out of here and get back, get the ball back, you know, into our offensive third. But, you know, Centennial's got some guys that can play. You know, they got some dudes that are going to, they're going to get the ball, they're going to take space. They're going to, they're going to play nice balls, other guys in space as well. I mean, they're a team that's, you know, have been good, you know, yeah. year after year. I mean, even when they're, you know, probably not as good as they as they have been. They're still gonna they're still gonna put together a squad that's gonna that's gonna test you. You know, and I think they've got. If you look across the board, they've got some 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 good athletes out there, and they've they've got some kids that, you know, that, that have that have played before, and they probably a lot of times will get some kids that come from overseas as well because of their parents are teaching at U of I. Yeah, they do have some names on the roster that make you think that. Yep. At least, if not first generation, second generation. And you can tell they have some players who looked the part already. And they are not afraid of coming here to play. They've had wins here on this pitch. Mm -hmm. Maybe not these players exactly, but institutional wins. That sticks with you in my mind. Kind of a rainbow over the field right now. Very pretty. I mean, they're just, they, they seem calm. Yes. You know, they're not, the pressure hasn't bothered them. You know, they're sitting in, they're doing a nice job to defend. You know, when they're getting the ball to their midfielders, they're, they're calm when they come out. They're taking the space that's given to them. You know, they're finding the, they're finding the next available passer. So, you know, I, I feel like this is going to be a good game. You know, I was asked about it earlier today, and I, you know, I said I don't know much about them right now, but I will tell you that, like you said, historically they come in and they give us fits. Yeah. And um, you know, I think we, we that's what we like about playing them. You know, but uh, you know, you're going to have to take care of business tonight. You're going to, you know, going to have to keep the ball on the deck. You know, you're going to keep it out of the wind. Um, and you're going to want to get the ball in the offensive third. We want to get some service, and we want to we want to get our guys. You know, we want Caden and those guys to get the ball on their foot, and we want to see if we can, you know, put one in the back of the net. Patrick O'Donnell clearing the ball out there under pressure. We know Centennial was down this weekend in the area. They played in the Morton tournament. I don't know what results they have, but that's always a a, a really highly competitive tournament, not just with the hosts, but. They always try to stuff it with the quality teams. Yeah. They, they, they seem to come to that for the last few years. I think so, too, yeah. It's kind of a rough turnaround. Come down here all weekend and yeah. then have to turn around and come back on a Tuesday. Could have put them up at your house, I guess. Yeah, I think I had a couple of them standing there. You, have, you, got, a yeah. big, you got a nice deck out there out back. <laughs> Sebastian Sells are on the ball here. Morning in the wrong direction there. Possession was actually going to Centennial here, right in front of our broadcast booth. Seven minutes into the game here. Neither team taking control. I figure out what uh, Centennial's play. Almost looks like a 4 2 4 or a 4 2 1 3. Yeah, their shape is, you know, kind of almost like. It's definitely four definitely in the back. Definitely four in the back. Yeah. This feel, I feel like they, they, you know, they're kind of playing one or two in front. You know, they're kinda, they kind of, they've got two kind of withdrawn mid, yeah. you know, midfielders that are sitting two. back yeah. in there, you know, to defend as well. And it's kind of like that 4 2 3 1, so to speak. One guy up top, and you know we're gonna we're gonna try to play out through these get through these 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 outside backs or outside midfielders. There's a chance here for the Irish. Declan Shooter throws in a nice cross. Dealt with calmly, maybe a bit too calmly by Centennials. Ends up getting a goal kick out of it though. Chested it down to his uh, compatriot there on defense. Ball ricochets off the Irish out of bounds. Goalkeeper listed as number 99 on the roster, but he's wearing number one, no one out there. That's a shame. I wanted to see a number 99 in goal. <laughs> it's like the pitcher in spring training that makes the roster. He's, he's getting 92 in the number they gave him because they didn't think they'd see him again. He's done a good job so far, though. Trusted a Andango. Yeah, he's, had, he's had one big save. And yeah. A couple handles. Kept the ball in, you know, in. Didn't give up a corner on one. So he's done a nice job for them. 
Yeah, part of that calmness you talk about that really is a, evident with the Centennial team. He's playing some long balls here. That one's kind of into the wind, but gets where it's going. Declan shooting over here on the right. Nice cross to the top of the D. Caden Hudson. Well done. Yep. Gonna get a corner out of it. We know Caden can strike from that distance and even further out. Schiller's done a nice job down here on the right side. No, he has. Picking out the right pass. They've done a nice job of getting the ball over the top to him as well. I think they're, they're finding that kind of that, that space is out there. You know, they've got the backs and they're kind of pinched in tight and they've got the two that are sitting in front of them and there's that space out on the flanks if you can get the ball over the top of those those guys. So we'll see kind of if we can take advantage of that. Give us another corner. Yeah. Nobody, I didn't hear anybody talking to him, so that's what the defender should have done. Just get it out. He doesn't know where anybody is. That's Max Manorell. He took the first corner. He's going to take the short corner from Hudson this time. Kane's looking to... Yeah, doesn't make the contact he wants there. Irish really putting the pressure on here now. Statue Hogan done on that right side. Irish are going to... Nope, but stays in, sorry. Depth perception problem there. Isn't that calmness you're talking about yeah. with the Chargers? They're playing it out, and I didn't just boot it. Right, they're just going to, you know, and, and one guy's going to have to hold on to it for a couple seconds, you know, to get let everybody come with him, and they're doing a really nice job of that. You can tell they train that, and, you know, it's pretty, pretty much second nature for them at this yeah. point. Teddy LaHood now in the middle of the pitch. Throwing the ball out to the right again here. Salazar, number 18. Well, that, 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 that's where the ball's got to go. It's got to go wide. I mean, if you if you kind of look through the center of the pitch, you're going to count five guys are in the in the middle there. So trying to go through the through the center of the pitch will be difficult tonight. Uh, not that we can't do it. It's just going to be real quick, short passes and a lot of movement if you want to work through that. But it's, you're probably going to find more success by going wide and kind of getting in there right there. As you see right there, that you've got some one-twos you can set up right now. Got to play quick. Schuler lurking on the back post. Now they see him. Good job by the defender there. Didn't allow Kane Hudson to get a glimpse of anything. I mean, once again, nice job by them just to kind of hold on to it, dribble backwards, you know, wait for guys to come with them so they've got good shape as they go forward. Good job by Burke. Right excellent here, tackle. A good turnover here. You've got to really play quick and, and see if you can break them down now. Snatcher Hogan driving in on goal. Well done. Shout out. Great job of keeping the defender off with his inside arm. Yeah, really nice job. I, I would have liked to have seen... Uh, Schuler kind of tuck inside on that one. You know, when he, once he saw that he was going to take him on with the dribble, just tuck inside and see if he could be an option, on, you know, at the top of the bar or at the top of the six or getting, you know, in between the 12 and the six spot and see if he couldn't get a ball there. Yeah, once he realized once, thought Thatcher was driving on goal and wasn't going to lay it yeah, off to him. He, yeah. No one else went, you know, so it was kind of tough. He played a good ball, but there was no one there with him. Like right in that spot there. Yo. Really nice. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. You know, yep. That, that, Absolutely. Those are good opportunities. You know, you're putting the ball on the ground. You're not trying to drive it, you know, anywhere else. And, you know, just we got to control it, you know, on the top half of it. And we're going to get one. Yep. I'm sure Taylor doesn't think it's fine, but everything else about it was. Physical mistake, you take that. The mental, emotional part was perfect. Again, most of the good stuff coming down the right side here for the Irish. Tom Dongo comes out. Yeah, good decision with by that. him. Yeah, you know me. I love a good goalie throw. <laughs> a little hand fighting there between both guys. Let it go. They just, they just have a lot of bodies yeah, there. You yeah, know, You can see even Caden had four guys around him and two more dropping in behind, and it's going to have to... You may have to see some early service out of this tonight. You know, try to drive the ball to the back post from, you know, 25, 35 yards out and see if you can get on the end that way. 
I mean, it, I mean one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven guys back there. Yeah, it's seven guys within the, the uh, top and bottom of the yeah. D, or the right and left of the D there. Which is smart. Yeah, I mean, smart by them. They're, they're, that's what they're doing. Now they're going to come out and counter, and, you know, they've, they've held onto the ball long enough to get some numbers forward, and they're finding feet, and we'll just see what we can, what they can, they're, they're going to try to see what they can do with it. And then now if they can, now they get a deep throw, and, you know, you want to take advantage of these situations if, if you're a Centennial. Yeah. If you got throw. a guy that can throw it long, let's, let's throw it in the area right now. It doesn't yeah. look like they do, or they would probably set up for it. Do you have the wind for the throw? But yeah, they didn't, didn't try. Yeah, see, I like I like that idea, like a, that early service and see yep. if you can catch like, somebody running onto it. Good job there, Mike. Especially after they get numbers forward. Michael Sagiv made that tackle there. Bravely put his body on the line. Kind of an unlikely turnover there for them. They've done a nice job of kind of holding onto the ball and shielding it, and playing backwards when they have to play backwards. up in the wind a little higher pressure there by him. yeah they made us make a mistake you know they've they've been low pressure and kind of counter kind of you know as a slow build up and you know then they throw a little pressure at you and mixes it up I, I, I like when teams do that you know I think if you've got if you've got the right caliber of kid that can do that and you can switch it up as a coach there's a nice long throw yeah I wonder why he didn't take the other one yeah of course he's defender so he's tire him out yeah, good piece of work here. Good bit of pressure here for a constant 90 seconds or so from the Chargers. Coming at the 25 and a half minute mark. Thank you. Some of that pressure you're talking about. You know, they, they, they could be calling that from the sideline. I mean, I've had teams in the past where we say, hey, you know, we're going to we're gonna be this way for, you know, 15, 16 minutes and then we're going to go high pressure for seven minutes, you know. And, Putting and, on a full court press. Yeah, I mean, just see basketball. what happens because, you know, especially in a game like this where it's 0-0 and nobody's had great chances, you know, it's like, hey, let's mix it up a little bit and see if we can, you know, just let them give us the ball away in the offensive third. Darish finally break that pressure here, get the ball into their attacking third. The ball out here in the cells are. Yeah, you got some runners now. Let's let's see if we can't get it in. Yeah, I gotta get a flag on that. Yeah, it's a good job on number 11 there on defense. Let's see who that is. And Jake Geis Geisler. Geisler. Did a very nice job. Didn't fall for anything there. Earns his team and foul on the free kick. Irish win that free first ball. It's McKissick, number 18. We talked about him earlier. Popping up all over the place. It's good there by Nathan Oliver. Picked that ball out of the air. Going to be a corner for the Irish. Defender eventually had to go to the ground there. Tried to get the ball out before the flag, but ended up wrong out on the other side. Tommy Graham back into the game. Well, just a lot of, you know, Centennial's taking a lot of pride in the way they're defending right now. You can hear it yeah, from their bench. You can hear it from be. their coaching staff. You know, I think that's... That's what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna do. For they're gonna try to do it for 80 minutes. You know, defend and oof. ball goes wide there. Trying to go short post with it. Andongo looked like he had it covered, but he went to ground just to be sure. The shot came from uh, Max Mattarelli, number 10. Sebastian Salazar is who was subbed out for Tommy Graham. Tommy will take his sort of constitutionally. Applied place there in the back of the Irish defense. <laughs> Where he's not allowed to leave, except for corner kicks. Irish 
trying down the left side now after going down the right for the first 20 minutes. Slightly less than 20 minutes gone. Yeah, I like that decision. Get the ball out of the mix. Bring it back here. Let them see if they can uncompress some of their shape, you know, right now. But they really didn't come out. They're like, we're going to stay back here. Okay, Nutson throwing into the box, dealt with by the defender. That was a nice pass there. Yeah, I mean, just. Absolutely what was necessary. And going to be able to relieve the pressure here with the throw in. Give their players time to catch back up to the flow of the game. Lights pretty much taking full effect here. It's mostly cloudy sky, darkening. This, <clears throat> this pace definitely is going to benefit them, and I think that's that's what they want to do. You know, we're going to take their time on throw wins. They're going to take their time on free kicks, especially as we sit here nil nil. Yeah, shorten the game. You know exactly. You know, you want to shorten it up, and you want to you know keep yourself pretty well rested, and you know we'll dump some balls and see what happens. But if we don't get them, we don't get them. Now we'll get back behind it. Teddy Dimmer, deal with that. Yeah, I was finding having a little trouble themselves playing it out of the back. They mostly been bombing it. Not gonna work this time though. That ball holding up in the wind. Probably trying to go out wider. Have a hit. There we go. <clears throat> Caden Hudson gets a shot off. About 25 yards out, 23 yards out. Doesn't go in though. I think he had a little more time than that. I thought he would have settled that and tried to hit it. Kind of snatched think, at it. Yeah, I just I feel like there's so you know there's so many bodies in there that he's probably thought to himself, well, I got to go quick with everything I do yeah. in here. And that means not taking a settling touch and just hitting it one time, which is. Tough to do when you're kind of moving away from the, the goal a little bit and you know, he's on the diagonal yeah. away from it. Even as talented the guy is Hudson. Hit number three, Freddie Mungi, into the game, replacing number 14, Spencer Wallace Dahl. Mbangi will play defensive position. Thatcher Hogan forcing the ball to be played out of bounds. Be a deep throw in for the Irish. <laughs> Two balls on the field. Make Coach Zerbonia unhappy. <laughs> He's very, very much pride in his tutoring of the ball boys, as he should. Irish got ahead on that, but didn't get any power on it. Bounces harmlessly to the Centennial keeper. All right, 17 and a half minutes here. Yeah, I think if you're Centennial, what you're saying, man, alluding to earlier here, they've got to be ha really happy so far. Oh, I think that I think they've got a good game plan, and they're you know they're sticking to it, and they're doing what they need to do. They haven't they haven't wavered from it at all. I mean, no. they've got their numbers behind the ball. They, they know they're gonna they know they're gonna deal with some pressure and. You know they're gonna they're gonna do the best they can to kind of you know weather the storm, and then when they do get the ball, you know they're, they're not trying to give it away by punting it like you, you know yeah. like you were saying they're just gonna they're gonna play the ball out by with his hands, and he's gonna try to get it to somebody's feet, and then they're gonna go up with you know with numbers, and they're gonna be pretty you know prudent about it. Yeah, this is a the zero zero score is deserved. Yeah, for sure, and I think right now I mean like this is a this is a good opportunity for the Irish, but once again you know just a good hard tackle to just kind of slow it down you know so they can get numbers behind it you know i would have probably like to see them try to drive a ball diagonally there out here you know just, and see if we could free something up but yeah give me yellow on that hand that tackle though 
That Stutz came up, I think, is his. Uh, yeah. Heel was in the ground and, you know, sh showed the studs, so that's going to, he's going to come off. It'll be replaced here. Number 29 is going to come in. And then that'll be uh, Nehemi Mbange, second of the Mbange. I assume they're brothers here. That's number five coming off of them. That's uh, Michael Saqib. He's one of their more, more important defenders, one of their captains. Off for the 10 yards. Kick's going to be taken from about, I don't know, 35 yards or so, probably from the goal mile by the time you triangulate everything. Against the wind, it's going to make it a little more difficult. Yeah, the Irish play is short, but Danger. bungle it. Yeah. He wouldn't know he was going with him. Nobody with him. He He's did smart. a good job. Just, yeah. I'm going to hold on to this ball and wait for help. You know? He still got it. He got himself about uh, six touches. A little unfortunate there for them. I mean, it, it's kind of fun to watch, I'll be quite honest. It is. Just, it's just, really attractive. The way that they're doing it and the game plan is is good. And, you know, they're giving us fits. You know? Yeah. And you gotta, you got to tip your hat to them right now. I mean. Yeah, even if you're not neutral. I, I I got, it's an attractive way of playing soccer. It I really got is. faith that we're going to break it down. It may take us. You know, some talking to at halftime to figure it out, but I, you know, I know I know we'll break it down. Well, they were talking to him, but I don't think he understood where the danger was coming from. Declan Schuler stripped him of his responsibilities as a ball carrier. It's Max Marelli driving hard on the goal from the right side. Oh, Ball gets go. back to him. That should be there it. Yeah. Go. Buried it. Almost impossible not to. Maybe got a little bit of a luck on the deflection there, but the luck is residue of uh, effort. Thatcher Hogan breaks breaks through. Didn't even need to uh, have to talk at halftime, apparently, Matt. No, I mean, that, that they had to play quick. They had to break yep. it down, you know. And, and you know, a little bit of pressure from the backside, you know, that, that kind of, you know, Connor coming back. Or I'm not sorry. Yeah, Declan. Declan, yeah. Declan easy to do. Declan coming back. You know, and and creating that pressure on them is where the turnover comes from. Yep. And then we're able, like you were saying, we just drove hard at the goal. You know, had a little weird deflection that came right back to his foot, and it was him and the goalkeeper. And you know, it's pretty much no man lands there. Yeah, Max for any goalkeeper. Yeah. Max has the ball in his foot there. Yeah, Max literally had the entire goal to choose from. He was Mac dead, dead center. And goal came at 15:29 to, to go here in this first half. It'll be interesting to see how you know how, how does Centennial react to that. Yeah, you know, they stay they stay true to what they want to do here. I think you do in the first half at least. I don't think you can make a change. I, I, I believe I, I I would agree. I think you just continue to do what you're doing. You've been successful. You defended well. You know you've got out with numbers. You've got the ball forward a few times. You know continue to do that. See if you can equalize by halftime, and then you know then kind of regroup. Brayden Lehman snuck into the game here. Team number eleven for the Irish. Playing a central role. Irish getting a throw in here. Just about box high, left side. We know Caden's got the arm to, got the arm, got the throw to put this near the penalty spot. Oof, glances off someone's head. It's a calmness there, rolls. Bounces and rolls to the keeper. It's a first punt, I think. They yeah. I thought maybe it was because he didn't have a strong foot, but uh, it seems to be evidence he does after that one. Yeah, yeah, sure, maybe going to get another nice deflection too, Taylor Hood. That's so often happening to right at the keeper. Good ball, everything up to it, though. Teddy made an excellent, excellent run. Now 
They've shown some patience themselves there. It's about six, seven passes in their own defensive half. Leading to a push, though. Ball back to Champagne Centennial. Why do all the fouls have to have, always happen in front of our student section? Literally, I think every foul that's happened in this game has happened in yeah, that 15 by 20 yard area. You're right, they have. <laughs> that was definitely a foul. I mean, yeah, it definitely was. I think all of them have been, you know, both ways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's trying to go shoulder to shoulder, but he got the back end of his shoulder blade, and that's just that's a no brainer for the official. It's just a shame it has to happen in front of all those intern <laughs> referees that we gather over there every game. Sebastian Salazar coming back into the game, number 18, replacing Declan Schuler. Declan's had a fine, fine first half. As you said, responsible for the opening action of that goal. Yeah. No, he's, he's done well. He really you know, has. He really just kind of took over that right flank and got good service, you know, knew when to get rid of it, you know, found, you know, Hogan a couple times and found Max and, um, you know, just done a nice job. Yeah, he yeah, has. Declan's just a sophomore. He'll be saying his name a lot in the next couple years. Yeah. Oh, we almost feel, I almost feel like we look a little heavy-legged, like maybe, you know, the long, the long weekend's sometimes difficult to deal with. Yeah. You know, you get out of your routine. Practice times are, you know, are different, you know, so it's a... Uh, it's sometimes it's sometimes tough to kind of get back into that, that that rhythm that you've had. You stay up later for more than two nights, you know, than, yeah. like normal, and just being kids. And <laughs> you know, I think that I always noticed that, like when we had come off a long weekend, or you know, you just the kids are they're, they're hard. You got to kind of wrangle them back into where you want them, and then, you know, and that could be a little bit of that right now. They're just they're definitely natures of you know, oh, yeah. natures of beasts, so to speak. Oof, good. Very, very nice ball put in there, my Great ball. Max. I think we just kind of ducked before. I think he put his head down and ducked before we really yeah. knew where it was going to be at. Ball might have, wind might have made the ball carry just a little bit further. It was too low for him. He's used to jumping up. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another good pressure here. Yeah, him. well, the cells are coming back from the exact same position yeah. that Shooter that came back from, yeah. doing the exact same thing, just a little bit deeper this time. Well, you know, the, and, and you I've heard Coach Driscoll kind of yelling at them, like, "Hey, when you see that guy getting forward, you got to come back and be, a, you know, and help, and you got to, you got to defend too, even though you're playing, you know, kind of that, that up top flank. You still got to come back and defend their flank. So, I mean, they're, and they're doing it. So, they certainly are. All right. A couple seconds under ten minutes left here in the first half. Irish up 1-0. Goal just about five and a half minutes ago from Maximilian. I think that might, that one there might have been just a little uh hey he's bigger than he is and kind of just stepping in front and got a little bit of him when he did yeah, I just weather it though yeah good composure there to play it out not bang it out ball ended up traveling over the touch line we see Sagiv. Number five coming back in. He had to leave because of the yellow car. Back in. May be a coincidence, but, uh, you know, he went out for those five minutes, and we scored during that five minutes. Like I said, he's the captain of their defense. He's one of the captains of the team. Not a guy the coaches would take off the pitch, I think. Normal. The run of the first 40 minutes. It's a good job of finding that ball in the air. That ball was knuckling. Throw in. Freshman Cal Burkett can take it here, number 13. Gets it over to Caden Hudson. Kind of dropped Caden back deeper. Yeah, I actually looked down to see who he was throwing it to because yeah. I didn't expect to see number seven there. I was like, yeah, who's number he, seven he, playing defense? About two, about two minutes ago, we kind of kind of slid him back a little bit, you know, in the midfield. I think that's um, so he can try to get on the ball a little more? Yeah, maybe, you know. Get, get, get him some touches. I mean, we, we've been doing a decent job of playing through the midfield, and you know, we, we haven't been able to kind of link up that well with him up top and just to kind of see what happens, I think. 
he's going to have to work to get the ball. There's a lot of yeah. bodies in there, you know, so you're going to have to find those passing lanes and, you know, work those five, six, seven, eight, ten yard sprints back and forth to get into to get it. So yeah, if you have him playing centrally in the midfield role there, yeah, you're right. Even on the uh, corner kick, he's still lurking well outside the box. We had a Thatcher Hogan nice run there that oh, didn't quite connect. Irish win that. That was number 20. Nathan Oliver again trying to keep the ball here in the offensive third for the Irish. Seven and a half minutes to go. Get the ball finding Max Mattarelli more and more here. It seems yeah. like in the last 10 minutes. It often does as the game goes well, along. I mean, Max, Max figures stuff out. And but if you watch Max, I mean, Max works. You know, he works his butt off. He gets into passing lanes. He's he's moving when he doesn't have the ball to to, to always be in that position to be to be able to receive it. You know, so he's gonna it's gonna find him. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, you know, just watch him. Watch how he just kind of after see. he gets rid of it, he's moving. He's jogging backwards. Now he's gonna kind of jog back into the middle of the pitch and. You know, so, oh, now I'm going to slide back over here because that's where the passing lane is. See, that's where it yep, almost right lands there. on his yep. foot. I mean, it's got to be constant movement like that. It doesn't have to be a sprint every time. You just got to be constantly moving so that you can get into passing lanes and receive balls. What's uh, Coach Locker's turn? The ball finds energy? Is that, his, yeah. is that what he says yeah, on the basketball that's court? That's true. Apparently he's a soccer genius too, not just a <laughs> basketball <laughs> genius. How dare you, sir? <laughs> That was, that was directed at part of our <laughs> crew up here. Apparently we're taking a voice vote on that. Yeah, and it's I mean, at least 2-2 two, two is what was coming down. We got a guy back here that's all about <laughs> defense, defense and basketball. So he's going to tell you that the defenders find the energy. <laughs> right. well, there's Thatcher Hogan almost finding the uh, right post there. Whistles pass by about a yard to the right, though. Beautiful shot, though. Low, heat-seeking missile. The kind of Thatcher is known to crack off. A couple subs coming in. Get some fresh legs here for this final five and a half minute push. <laughs> Celebrity sighting. <Bounce. laughs> yeah. Mike Plunkett. Mike, Mike counts as a celebrity in my world. It's a very shallow, closeted world I live in. <laughs> All right, last five minutes of the half. Very important. There last five minutes, first five minutes, you always say. Little, little quick one-twos through the middle of those guys. I mean, you, the two guys went through four guys by just playing those quick passes. It's Caden finds some of that traffic you were talking yeah, about. It's I mean, just I, always in front just, of him. It's just tough, you know. I mean, they, they know... It, we're crazy if you think they're not keying off. Yeah. You know, and I think that's why he's been slid back in the midfield. And he's got to kind of recognize that and be willing to kind of play that spot, you know, and, and be willing to play the ball quick and, and give it up to get it back. Um, that's that's going to be the way you break this down. But, uh, yeah, punish him. Become the distributor. Yeah. Punish uh, him a little trouble clearing the ball here. A couple balloon on him in the wind and just not quite making the contact. Danger here. Yeah. Bad turnover. A little too cute by a half there. Good pressure, good pressure. Just turn around, there you go. There's Sebastian Salazar. Worked all the way back on defense. Gonna give him a little bit aggressive of a challenge there, though. It's, a, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Deep in your own territory. After what, about an 80 yard sprint, probably? Good win, Tommy Graham comes up. And Irish pressing for the second goal. Going with that 2-0 lead. Chargers dearly love their own goal here with three and a half minutes to go, but really, really do not want to concede a second. Undo all the fine work they've done here in these first 37 minutes. I think I think that Maybe a goal kick. <laughs> yeah, goal kick. But you know, there's there's just so much like energy that that we're kind of making them extend to defend. And I think this is gonna 
Yeah. You know, it, it, it'll break at some point. You know, you, you, you're not going to keep up with all these runs. And, yeah. And, and it's going to be a little different in the second half. You know, the wind's died down a little bit. You know, but even if it doesn't die down, we'll have the win. We're not going to have to play those. Through. Some of those balls we've kind of lofted and not been able to get to the end of the attack. We'll be able to do that more so in the second half. Great ball play. Yeah, play. beautiful ball. Oh, just got a toe pump on it. It was Caden lurking back in midfield. Couldn't quite get there, but it was a beautiful job played a ball played by Salazar to Hogan. It, well, yeah, I thought it was just one little toe poke on that thing got it out of where it needed to be, and I think if it, they don't, we score on that. Oof. Great move. Get in there. Nice. Good save. Good build up. Kind of some earlier earlier service there. You yeah. Know, didn't get quite as deep and kind of caught them off guard. So yeah, threw it all the way to the mix back it up post a this bit, time. Yeah. I don't know if that was, uh, who got their head on that? Was that Teddy LaHood over there? I, I, yeah. It, it, definitely in the glare of the lights. I can't see him. It was a tall, thin drink of water, though. I think it was Teddy. Yeah, it was Teddy that got in on it. He got a lot of power on the header. Dealt with by the keeper. Irish keeper. Rolled the ball out. Dimmer to Hudson. Good, yeah, good tackle to come back and just yeah. kind of win it. And, uh, ball up high ball. here. It's going to be, oh, yeah. Just, 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 you know, are, just a bounce yep. just caused by the wind. You yep. know what I mean? Like it, it, The wind threw off the defender and the attacker well, there. There's no wind. That ball's, in the way it's driven, it's, he's going to be able to run onto it. But because of the way the wind is tonight, it just kind of holds it up and makes it bounce high. minutes ago a little high pressure here they I mean you could hear their coaches that screaming at him to play a little high pressure right like, towards the last minute yeah don't need to save your energy expend it all here we'll say this the Chargers have uh, liberally substituted too so they yeah. are, are saving their legs a little bit they've uh, thrown on at least five or six subs Irish are going to get a corner kick here with 40 seconds to go this should be the just long, enough last. time to yeah to get something off good here yeah, it doesn't have to be direct from it, but it can result from it. Play it short. Max Manarelli. Oh, the Irish don't quite get the connection they want. A couple Ooh, times. Oh, what a save. great save. A strong, strong big right arm. Save. 13 seconds. Oh, we got an offside. It doesn't matter. It was a great save, though. A complete reflex save. You can see the athleticism, the reaction time. That's going to run out. Good half. Yeah, very entertaining half. I hope you all enjoyed it at home. That entertaining half sees the Irish up 1-0. A goal from Max Mattarelli. Came in about uh, 15 and a half minutes gone. In the first half, right straight in front of goal from about six yards out. Max just buried it. He had plenty of places to put it, and he picked a good one. Again, that gives the Irish a 1-0 lead going into the second half of this Big 12 clash between Champaign Centennial and your Peoria Notre Dame Irish. We'll see you in about uh, 10 minutes of real time to take up the second half. Bye-bye.
Welcome back, going on the name soccer fans. P and D to N D T V or P and D. News there channel, and we're going to get a goal here at the 39 Forget 47. your introduction. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> should, have, should have talked to the coaching staff to say, hey, just kick it around for about 45 seconds or so out near midfield. Let me set the dramatic stage. Well, now 2 nothing. The Irish went into halftime up 1 nothing. Come out. And Matt, you always talk about last five, first five. Well, yep. this first, yeah, I didn't think you meant the first five seconds. Well, that's, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, Centennial's in there, you know, working on, you know, I, I could hear their coaching staff working a little bit on what they wanted to do and didn't want to change much. They still wanted to play with that good yeah. shape. And, yeah, they know, shouldn't and, have changed uh, much. See what happens. And now, <laughs> well, I mean, literally, what is it? 13 seconds 13 in? 13 seconds in, yeah. You, you, you've given it another one up, and now you've got to kind of probably make some adjustments here. Yeah. Can't play that beautiful brand. And we, we were just about ready to talk about how, how attractive we found the way Centennial attacked and or didn't attack the Irish. Now they find themselves down 2-0. Lehman, good job there. Goes down with a foul from McKissick, number 18. Following number 11. The Irish going to get a free kick here near midfield. Tommy Graham coming up to take it. I think a lot changes for the Irish here in terms of their set pieces and having the wind at their back and being able to kind of drive balls on the line in there. And, you know, I think you're going to see see a lot of different chances. You know, uh, great ball. No, oh, that ball just fits. You know, you you've got to come out and come on. You got to come out and you got to come out and win that if you're the keeper. And yeah, the ball kind of played him there. He got lucky. Yeah. I'm sure he saw it. The Irish uh, attacker flashed in front of him. Couldn't get his head on it. Might have been a little surprised by it too, you know, not used to seeing the ball carry like that in the first half. Yeah, be exactly the first his first shot at the having the wind uh, in his face. In the end, he did deal with it. Time off for a half time. Came back. Hasn't materially affected the game in any positive or negative way, really. Yeah, but I think both teams have done a really nice job of just, you know, keeping the ball on the deck. Ooh, here's a good chance for them. Yeah, here it is. If he can get his foot around oh, it. Oh, great, job great tackle or great uh, intervention there. Yeah. Very, you know, I noticed that the four guys were going. You know what I mean? They, they, they were like, we're going forward. We're selling out a little bit here. And, and we had to deal with all four of them. Yeah, that was McKissick, I think, on the end of that number 18. We talked about him in the first half. Excellent, excellent chance. There's, I think that was Nathan Oliver who came through and got the boot on it. And they seem like they're keeping more numbers forward now. Uh, not not working so hard to get come back and get into it. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're gonna, they've got guys that are staying higher now. Those guys were all sitting back yep. in. And, yep. You know, so they've, they've changed formation. They probably said, hey, if we go down a second goal, let's, we're going to come out and do this. And unfortunately for them, they had to do it in the 13 second mark. <laughs> yeah, well, you can tell they're a smart, disciplined team from the first half. So, yeah, I mean, yeah they're, they're definitely, definitely trying to yep. go forward now. The guys are going with them. You know, they're playing hard. I mean, I'm, that, that's what, I mean, I'll be, I'm not trying to, be a jerk or anything, but that's yep. what you have to do. I mean, if you want to create goals and the guys gets in between you and the ball, you got to try to play through them a little bit, and you know, hope you're hoping sometimes that the referee swallows a whistle a little bit and you get to play through it. And, yeah, you know, you got, they're going to have to play hard. They're going to have to press our guys, and I mean, they know our, our our defenders are good and they're strong and they're they're skillful. So it's going to take everything. It's going to take a, a you know a huge effort to break those guys down. So you're probably going to see some some play like that. It's not necessarily cheap. It's just guys playing hard because they're trying nope. to equalize. Yeah, well, you know, McKissick, quality player. And Donald Aaron going to get a foul out near midfield. Let's see how the Irish deal with this uh, change in philosophy and change in shape. So far, they dealt with it pretty good. Oh, that was a great ball. Just 
couldn't quite find the foot of Caden Hudson. But Irish still retained possession. Taylor Hood driving. Got Thatcher Hogan throws a nice left-footed cross. Great ball back to the six. You know, just hard to deal with. Defenders are bodies are facing the other way. Takes the wind. Ooh, that ball, one hop, gets the keeper. Crossbar high. Something to think about later on. Good win by the Irish there. <laughs> nice little move. And Declan Schuler there back on his right side. Let's see if we have that same. Switching off between him and Sebastian Salazar throughout this second half. That worked so well for the Irish in the first half. Another throw in here. Going to be Kane Hudson again. This one travels just about as far. The Irish win it. Get the head on it. I think it's Tommy Graham got his head on it. Just floats over the crossbar. Resulting in a goal kick for the Chargers. You can see here now, only three in the back. Now they're not moving. Push one guy up forward. More of a almost diamond. Or three in the front here, I mean, instead of two. Or just one guy up there solo. Yeah, they they, they got, they're, they're pushing numbers for sure. And they're gonna, you know, what's gonna open it up for us? Yeah, you know, it should open gonna, up. You're gonna center. see, you're gonna see more chances for us, hopefully. You know, I, I, if I was a bet man, I'd say we, we're definitely gonna get more chances. Going to play the advantage there. It's probably a proper call. The Irish are on the front foot. You get a shot off here, and it goes in. Nice. Oh, I'd say we played the advantage properly there from the Irish point of view. Caden Hudson absolutely destroys the back of the net from just <laughs> inside the box. That was a rocket. From the right side, crosses across the goalie into the side netting, the good part of the side netting. 3-0 now, Irish up, 33-24 to go. So less than seven minutes into the first half. Champagne Centennial concedes two goals, puts himself in a rather large hole. A couple subs come in for Champagne Centennial. The coaching staff would like to talk to a few guys. Whether it's about the defense or the offense, I do not know. Centennial, he's done a nice job of subbing. You know, he's, oh, yeah. he's kept those guys fresh. He's moved guys in and out. You know, I, I, kind of just the rotation, I think, of what they've been doing. They, uh, you look at their... Uh, Roster <coughs> heavy on juniors and seniors. And one one sophomore listed on the varsity roster. Whether they've added a few here since then or not, I don't know, but they are experienced. Generally means you can have a deep bench. All right, now when you're Irish, you don't want to stop this. No, you, you, want, you want absolutely to keep push this forward going, here yeah. try to get try to get another one or two and you know just kind of you know, keep the ball on this side of the field yeah. lock it in wear them out yeah make make life hard on them you know that they're they've got a lot of spirit it'd be nice to take some of it away that ball great ball yeah it came in huge fan of those when, when they throw them in like that die high they're just they're just difficult they're difficult to deal with Nice job of Notre Dame to kind of make him turn backwards and not let him continue to attack forward. Some, uh, one of the uh, players up top was yelling desperately to have switch fields, switch fields to the side of the field he was on, not coincidentally. 
Irish did not allow the Chargers to do that. Teddy Dimmler pressured here. Just going to play the ball out to the side. Again, Max Manarelli, as you explained. Ball's going to find him because he moves so much. Is Declan Shooter. Throw in another nice cross there, dealt with by the keeper. Again, that is Trasodi on Dongo. He was throwing a nice shutout for the first 25 minutes of the game, and then the next 20 didn't go so well. Daniel's still very composed, you know, they don't, they're not panicking. They're no. not trying to like just bang balls out as fast as they can. They're trying to, they're trying to find feet. They're trying to do it the right way. You know, you know, unfortunately for them, like we're, we're very, we're very organized in the back right now. Yeah. You know, we've won pretty much everything we've had. You know, I say they're composed. We're twice as composed <laughs> um, in the back, especially. I mean, we just played out of the back from Graham to to Teddy, Teddy to Graham, Graham outside wide, and then found a forward and we were out, you know what I mean? So, uh, and there was pressure on him, you know, there was two, three Centennial guys back there when the ball went to, to Teddy's feet, you know, as the goalkeeper too. So, you know, we've done a pretty nice job as well. I mean, that's a great decision right there. That's, that's yep. I mean, it looks easy. It's not, you know, to just play the ball back with your head because that's the only way you can play it to him. Yeah. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't, pass it to him. I mean, you can. He'd have to use his feet. But if you want him to use his hands, it's got to be, yeah. you know, the head or the chest or something along those lines. And, and and that was just great composure. He's sprinting backwards, too. And so you've got to have control of your body to play the ball at the right pace to the goalkeeper and not banging over the top of him into his net. There's that pressure we're talking about earlier, you know, just coming back, you know, just I'm just going to give you enough pressure that you don't want to go forward anymore and you're going to play backwards. That, that that legal shoulder to shoulder there yep. is what gave the ball away. You know, just because we pressed so hard at him and we banged on him just a little bit before he gave before he passed the ball and now he gives it away. You know, that that's perfect. That's textbook defense right there through your midfield. Just to bang on him a little bit so they want so they can't do what they want to do with it. I've been impressed with our with our with our intensity and our pressure. You know, we we have pressed throughout the whole field. We've made it very difficult on them, and uh, you know it's it's paying off in dividends. Certainly has here in the first ten minutes. Irish have put two into the net, increased their 1-0 halftime lead to a 3-0 second half lead, and probing for more. <laughs> He's not going down. No. Again, that was Max Matarelli. Thatcher Hogan on the left. Beautiful ball. I wish right on it. Oh, it hits the post. That's in. That went in. They're going to call it in, yeah. That's Still by the way he slapped it. Great ball by Caden to the backside and good run to the back post. And, you know, that, that's, that's huge. Goes in off the underside of the bars. And then in pat over the, completely over the white line, the goal line. Goal comes at 27-44. Yeah, Irish fourth goal of the game, third in this uh, first 12 minutes of the second half. We're checking the PND VR. <laughs> yeah, it was a goal. It was a goal. It's a goal. Checking to see whether you were offside, there, Coach Blackford. <laughs> you were a little forward. I was even. <laughs> That's Max Matarelli there. Max's second goal. Hudson showing off his uh, not just uh, uh, shooting prowess when he's around the box, but his passing prowess also. Right here, thinking about this from uh, Centennial's point of view here, you know, the way they played in the first half, uh, 
that's going to win them a lot of games. You know, yeah, I mean, so I mean, you want to practice that still, right? Right. Because I, that's going to win you a lot of 50-50 games. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think if they're going against an opponent that's you know a little bit stronger than them, you know, it's, they're going to bode well if they play this way. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably some teams that they're going to play a little bit more like what they're playing right now, and they're going to be very successful. You know, um, but I think you you. You talked a little bit about this, their, their, their season. You know yes. what I mean? They're juniors, they're seniors. You're not talking about freshmen and sophomores that have never played different styles of play. You know, he's mixed things up with them tonight. They've played, they, you know, they've parked the bus to an extent and played low pressure and, 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 and then countered, but they countered with 11 guys, you know. And then now they're, they're playing more straight-up soccer, um, trying to get forward, playing a little more high pressure, and they're doing well with it. So I think as the Big 12 season kind of runs its course, I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the top yeah. two, three teams. Yeah, you definitely know? expect them to have a winning record, winning yeah. conference record. And, I would, so I know. Yeah, because we, we don't, I don't really know much about the Big 12 right now. I haven't followed much of those other teams and what they've done in their kind of pre-Big 12 yeah. games. Um, you, know, you know, I know normal community is probably going to be good. West has the, the possibility to be good as well, too. And, um, you know, I don't. I don't know anything about Champaign Central uh, at this point either. But uh, you know, I think I think this is a team that's that's gonna that's gonna win some games, and you know, wouldn't be surprised if if uh, they're in the top two, three, you know, part of the conference when when it's all said and done. Yeah, I would definitely expect them to be in the top third. I mean, I'm being I'm being a little bit, you know. Uh, Selfish and saying that I feel we're the best team in the conference. I, I, I do. I feel like we are. Um, yeah. You know, we're what ranked number one right now, overall in the state. And, um, nice, oh, nice goal there. Good. Just composed, finds the back of the net. Just finds it right in the side oh, netting. Max again. Did this no one, one just, on his own, unassisted this time. And I think I think I feel like no one, no one. No one closed him down. No nope. one stepped to him, and he just kept going, you know. And I think it's that part of the game probably where they're looking up going, okay, well, we gave it the old college try, and yeah. now it's 5-0 it's and, you know. 80, 82 miles home yeah. from here, yeah. It gets it gets tough to. It does. It does. 16, 17-year-old kids. They got tests tomorrow. We got homework still to do. We yeah. Got, yeah, it's uh, it's tough. Again, that was Max Manoli, and that came with about – Slightly over 25 minutes to go here in the second quarter, or the second half, giving the Irish a 5-0 lead. That Max is on a hat trick now. One in the first, two in the second. That one was probably the uh, most beautiful one, certainly the most one that was done with individual effort. Well, there's, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> I, not to beat a dead horse, but it, 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 it can be overwhelming, you know, when, when you're in this game and, you know, you you think you're in it for a while, and then all of a sudden it's it's yeah. one nothing. Now it's two, three, four nothing, and you're like, what what just happened? And yeah. I mean, you were in it. For we're not going to five minutes. You're absolutely in it. You know, you're not going to ask your kids to come out and not play hard. You know, and I think no. Coach Bear's got a decent, deep, decently deep team, and he's he's throwing guys in the mix. And you're not going to tell those guys, hey, uh, go in there and don't play hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're winning four nothing. You know, we're yeah. not going to do that. All that hard work and practice is about to pay off. I just want you to knock the ball around and right. not try. Yeah, and that's that, not how that works. It's, it's, you lose your team if you try to do that, honestly. So they're gonna, you're, guys are gonna compete for 80 minutes. You know, guys are guys are vying for time. You know, they want to play hard. They want to do well when they're in here, and um, it's not something that's that's easy. I don't know. Got it for studs up. That yeah, seems a little harsh. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to, yeah. His heels were in the ground for the most part, it looked like. Um, and, and I think they gave one here on them early in the first half, so it's kind of what goes around comes around at this point, you know. Yeah. I mean, we we weren't. Yeah, again, we were willing to take it either. at that yeah. point, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Nothing malicious in either of them. No, the this guy trying to score. And yep. Just like that guy was trying to defend. It was just unfortunate. Matthew Hogan then comes in and replaces Kane. He's going to sit down because of the yellow. It's not a bad <laughs> replacement, no. all things considered. Take off Kane, throw on Thatcher. Uh, nobody hurt out of the exchange. Just a shoe, it looks like. <laughs> Blown.
blown out a tire. All right, I'm sure. As we said, 5 0. Let's see what Champagne can do here. Get off a shot there from just outside the box. Skips to Teddy Dimler. Teddy takes care of it. Shot. It that ball hit the post three times, I think. It hit at least twice. It hit the post at the crossbar. It hit the post, the crossbar, and I think the other post. A triple doink. You're not going to. You bear fans out there. <laughs> you son of a gun. We've, we've one-upped you. <laughs> we triple doinked you. I didn't even see who the shot came from. Somewhere out right, my guess, maybe uh, Sebastian or somebody lurking on that right side. I didn't see it. I, Tom Locker heckling me behind the crow's yeah. test. <laughs> Wondering how he can get in for free. Yeah, who let him in? Corner kick that resulted from that triple doink. Gets played out. I'm just going to get a free kick here. About five yards. Like Top it. of the box. Going to be a very dangerous position. Just take a quick, oh, just misses Teddy LaHood's head. Teddy was just, tough for us to tell, but he looked like he was a scan inch or two away. <laughs> 35 comes in. With his first action today, Benny Kavumuvalula. Pretty sure that was not correct. That's why they let <laughs> Rob Kenny <laughs> hold on to the we're gonna <laughs> to the rosters. We're gonna assume he's like Pele and he's gonna go by his first name. Yeah. Benny. You're gonna treat him like Madonna. <laughs> you heard the uh, Irish coaches talking about, hey, let's look, this last 20 minutes, let's really concentrate on our shape. Yeah. Let's really work on that. Let's, let's yeah, use this real life world experiment out here to work on something. Can't just be freewheeling out here now and playing street ball. Yeah, they, they, they've done a nice job. I mean, but one of the reasons we do a nice job is because it's, it's like harped on them and drilled on them constantly about, about your shape, you know, about, about your spacing, about your pressure, about your support, you know, who's covering who. You know, he's just drilled into you, drilled into you, drilled into you until it becomes second nature. Julian Corona, number 17 now in the game here, playing up top on the left side. Looks like we're going to have a keeper exchange here, too. Irish are going to throw on Logan Walby, sir. Take off Teddy Dimbler. Teddy has not had much to do today. Irish training staff out there. Look at it, looks like uh, Brandon Lehman. So Declan Shooter's going to come back into the game then, replace him. Logan Wallbeezer's fan club, Braxed and donning the red shirt, manning the goal. Good job by Ted Dimler today. Uh, Ted did a nice job. Yeah. But, you know, wasn't necessarily overly tested, but, you know, did a great job communicating. You know, balls that he had to handle, he handled well. 
you know, just did a nice job of when he did get the ball, just kind of getting it out, out with his hands, not trying to give up possession. Yeah, it's not all about zeros on the score sheets when it comes to uh, keeping. Mm. <clears throat> just bounced a little bit off the thigh there. Looks like it's Thatcher Hogan trying to run down on it, or maybe I, Sebastian Salazar, rather. I think they're down the right side. Just a little bit aggressive second or uh, last touch. The ball falls to Thatcher Hogan right there. Nice. Thatcher skies one a little bit over. That's opportunity though. He was hit on a swivel. He saw the misplay and pounced on it. And Zach Nethery gonna be coming in for the Irish sophomore. A little bit of a counterattack here by, <coughs> excuse me, by Champagne Centennial. Dealt with nicely by the Irish back line there, though. Centennial's lost quite a bit of their shape. You know, not able to kind of track balls down on top. They're just not quite as committed to be as high as they were before. Yeah, and, um, you know, the shape's not great. They're kind of meandering around yeah. out there. Yeah, that's, that's, honestly, that's just a, exactly what I was just thinking. Polite way of saying it. <laughs> San Julian Corona can be released. All right, here we have Logan. It's his first touch of the game. Deals with that high bouncing. High arcing bouncing ball. Why he looks around and says, hey, I'm gonna let Tommy Graham make the decision. <laughs> That's what I would do every time if I were out there. Patrick O'Donnell, ball here on the left side. The Irish coaching staff not telling them specific things they want them working on. They're very committed just to possess here, knocking around. See if we can pull them out a little bit. Get some probing balls in there. Yeah, get some kids touches on the ball in live action. As you said Zach Nethery is waiting to come into the game here in the next opportunity. Right at midfield. Ball balloons up a little bit there in that free kick. Probably did not go where he was planning it. Max Mano, he looked like he was just clearing that ball, but he had Declan Schuler over there. Found him. Approaching 16 minutes to go here. <clears throat> Irish still up 5-0. Explosion of four goals. Within about 20 minutes or so in the start of the second half. Including one in the first 13 seconds. Probably be the quickest goal we score in a half all year. I'm Going out on a limb there. 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Usually would have taken me 13 seconds to remember what color uniform my teammates <laughs> were wearing. So never really experienced scoring a goal that quickly. Are we the blue or the red? Oh, we're white? OK. <laughs> All right, that explains a lot of my performance in the first half. I have half. been passing the wrong team. I have, who are those guys I've been passing to? Thank you. 
Good to see Braden Lehman come back on here after having to come off. Being seen by the physios. Teddy LaHood's going to come off. And it looks like Thatcher Hogan, maybe? Uh, no, no, Matt Max Matarelli. I'm sure Max is going to know what to do sitting down. It's not really his natural place in the universe. And Sebastian Salazar now has moved into the, uh, maybe taking Max's place there a little more centrally. I mean, I see these guys play, you know, get. Yeah. Let's see. Get some touches on the ball, like you were saying. Let's possess. Let's knock it around. Let's still try to get forward. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no harm in getting after it and trying to score some more goals. No. Good job by Julian Corona there. Juju, coach, has been calling there. Nice job. I'm not sure I'm close enough to Julian to call him Juju. I'm sure he'll be okay with it. I think so. Yeah, we'll get permission after okay. the game. I'm gonna slip into his DMs and see what he thinks. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah, maybe on second thought. <laughs> right, a little bit of life here on a centennial, and you know you usually. You know, this kind of reminds me of the you know, Quincy Notre Dame game. You know, when we were yeah. you know, like you know a quality team. You know that we just handled. Again, it was 5-0 there, and you're like, it's not you know, indicative of the. Uh, I mean, we're just good. I don't, you know, we're just good and we play well together. We have a lot of guys back from the state title winning team. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's hard, you know, and I, I know I've said that a couple times, but it's hard when you get down, you know, five nothing and, you know, you want to be committed to a different shape. You want to be committed to numbers going forward. But at the same time, you're a kid and you start thinking to yourself, well, I really don't want to go forward because they're go, they're coming yeah. at us with so much pace and so many numbers, and they're getting shots and they're scoring goals. Yeah. So we're just gonna play it safe and not be as committed to getting forward yeah. like we were with I numbers, think, even yeah. though the coaching staff probably wants to see them get forward with numbers. That's, so it's just yeah. one of those things. It's difficult. It know? is. It's it's difficult to go into tackles as hard as you were doing in the first. Yeah, half. I mean, it's it's it, I mean, you pull out of things. It's just it's human nature. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you're gonna start thinking about, you know. <laughs> What's what's the the analysis of benefit here for me? You know, to go forward, and it's not going to be great if they get possession of it and they decide to counter. Yeah, bad things, <clears throat> bad things happen when they're behind me. I'm going to try to keep them in front of me. Yeah, we're standing over free kick here, literally right at the corner of the box, on the right side. Looks like we have maybe Declan Schuler standing over it. That no, left footed shot there. I don't think that was Declan. Balloons over. I think maybe it was Sebastian. Chargers throwing another player. Jacob. Jacob Witte. I believe he's on for the first time. Champagne coach and staff getting touches for their players too. I think that's going to be beneficial. Year goes on. They're already, as we said, a really experienced squad. They're loaded with juniors and seniors. You know, sometimes you get in a game like this and you start subbing guys in, and you know, there's guys that want to prove a point and yeah, you know, you find show something. you what they have, and you know, yeah, you, for sure, you, you you find out what they can do, and you know, somebody surprises you, and you say, oh man, I should have I should have used her, or I should have used him. Yeah. Maybe sooner than I have in the past, and um, well, y'all know as coaches, there are some people who are just game players rather than yeah. practice players. It's it's you know just the way it works. It works the other way around, unfortunately too. But uh, there's sometimes people just get out there in the game and they show you stuff that they didn't show you in practice for whatever reason. Well, and I think sometimes, especially here at Notre Dame, I mean your practices are sometimes more competitive than the games. I mean it, it, it's just how it is, yeah. you know. And so sometimes you just don't recognize some of that stuff as a coach, and then you get into a game where. You know, like not it's, playing it's, against it's, all it's, Yeah, you're not yeah. playing against those yeah. the same caliber kids. I and, hadn't thought of it in those and, terms. You know, all of a sudden, I, I I used to notice that a lot. I'd be you know a quarter of the way through the season, and I'd be like, "Hey, where'd she come from?" And one of the assistants would be like, "She'd been here the whole year, coach." <laughs> you know, you just it's just one of those things where we just 
we don't, you know, it sounds rude, but we just don't notice no. it as yeah. much until you, you get in a situation where it's against a different team. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you start seeing that stuff and you start, you know, it's maybe a little bit of a trust thing where you start trusting them a little bit more and you start, you know, you, you start playing them a little bit more in practice with with maybe the, the, the first team and, you know, you're starting to see better things and it makes you deeper and, you know, so you can see a lot yeah. of good stuff out of a game like this. That's an excellent point. I had not thought about that, but practices here at Notre Dame for you. I mean, you had squads that were loaded on the female side. They do the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe. And there's a pecking order. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, I mean, is. that oh, happens yeah. with every team. I yeah. mean, there is with this guy's team. There <coughs> is with the girls' team. There is with Centennial's team, you know. So, you know, sometimes you don't want to upset the apple cart, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, your chance to do that is when you get some time in a game like this to show what you can really do. Always got to pay your dues, you know. Oh yeah. People don't recognize <clears throat> that enough. Number fourteen there, Joseph Minky snuck into the game on us. A name familiar to longtime Notre Dame soccer fans and <laughs> track and cross country fans. Lots of replacements. And Patrick Graham and Jack Miller into the game for the Irish. Two freshmen getting some time here. Uh, more than a few subs coming in for Champagne Centennial, not Central Centennial. Yeah, you see a lot of kind of watching them come off, and you can see the disappointment in their faces. But you know, kind of more, not, not you know maybe not just like bitter disappointment is more of that. Hey, you know we played so well to start yeah. with and. You know, you can kind of see that in them, like, you know, we were in this, you know, and it just it got away from us, you know. But yeah. There's a lot of teams that it's going to get away from this year. You yeah. Know what I mean, somebody's going to get them, you know. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it happens. You know, we've all seen, we've had some great teams here where all of a sudden we lose one, one to nothing or two to one at a weird point in the season. And, you know, yeah. I always say that's the best thing that ever happened to us. You know, we get beat by somebody and then end up going on and winning a state championship. So, um but, you know, it did. It got away from them, and, and uh, they couldn't recover from it. And, uh, but, you know, I would say hats off to them. I felt like they had a great game plan. I felt like they, they played it as, as hard and as well as they could for as long as they could. And then, um, you know, unfortunately, that 13-second, that you know, kind of letdown at the beginning of the second yeah. half was the demise. Yeah. Um, but we say all the time, like, hey, man, the first five and the last ten, you know, you know of the halves is when – good things and bad things happen, depending on what side of it you're on, you know? It works, yeah. I was just thinking about showing film in this game and be <clears> like, <throat> you know, concentrate on that first 25 minutes. You know, may, you know, unless you think they were massive breakdowns that resulted in the goals, maybe you want to see what happened when that 13-second goal and be like, hey, yeah. well, how come we weren't ready in the first 13 seconds? But then that, I, I show the first half to them and say, look at this. This is how we can play. That we, yeah. we're gonna, What we talked about. We're going to win games. We're going to be a five, well above 500 team if we play like this. Yeah, and I, let's I, forget the second half. Hundred percent agree with you. I mean, I, I I would, I'd cut I'd cut tape on the second half and that show the first half and and just see how good look how good we are look how well we defended mm -hmm. look how organized we are, you know look how smart we are with the ball when we win possession to wait for our our players to come forward with us. I mean that's just that's high IQ soccer. You know it's just it's tough to do. You know it's tough to do for 80 minutes. I mean you oh, yeah. you go and watch an EPL game and you you see somebody go up one nothing and the the team parks the bus and I'm always like. What are you doing? I just don't know how you can defend for that long. You know, maybe yeah. if, even if it's 60 minutes or something, and 80% and of the time they can't. Yeah. You know, it's so hard to do. Well, you joked at halftime, and we should just go home because we didn't think the first <laughs> half could, could get better than the first yeah. half. And you're and you're right because it's hard to play that high IQ soccer for yeah. 80 minutes. So I mean, it's just your mind gets tired as your legs and your lungs. Oh, and, you, and it's a good point that you bring up. I mean. The second half is, to me, has not been as an, an enjoyable of a, a half to nope. watch. I mean, even though we've seen a lot of Irish goals, yeah, you know, we're not seeing that struggle, you know, and that that, uh, you know, the, the that that fight for every possession, you know, and it's uh, those are the fun games to watch. Yeah. those are the times when you're sitting up here announcing a game and you're like, holy crud, it, that that's 40 minutes is yeah. over already. Yeah, yeah, those are you the know? best. They are absolutely the best. And then you get into sometimes with you know like this second half. I mean, it, yeah, if you're if you want to see goals, it, it's great. But um, 
you know, the first half to me was much more enjoyable because of the fight. I agree. Nice save. Good save there, my goalkeeper. Good, good effort to get that shot off. Came in just a, before the five minute mark. Just about five minutes left to go in this game. Five on the Irish tally board, zero champagne. One goal in the first half for the Irish. One very quick goal to start the second half for the Irish. Like you said, man, that just that just absolutely undid everything that they yeah. had talked about at halftime. I mean, they just had to. And then three subsequent goals after that. And it ends up to five. Irish will have a, another home game there this week. We play here Thursday versus Danville. I think it's just a varsity game usually at five o'clock. We'll have to check that. Big save. Nice job there by Logan. Tested. And not found wanting. But the Irish will be playing. We'll have a volleyball broadcast. On Thursday, volleyball game. I think Champagne Centennial was in town for volleyball also. Yeah, so. Not these same players, of course. That would be weird. It's girls volleyball. Oh, boy. But we'll have a 5, 6, and 7 game there. And then we'll have, I, I think, Danville. Or I know Danville in town. I don't know if there's a if they have a JV team this year or what. But generally, we try to get that game in a little bit earlier due to the long distance that Danville has to travel. The players in Peoria area schools. And then a rare weekend off for uh, the broadcast team, at least. Football team coming off a 70-0 victory. We're going to Bloomington. You said Bloomington High School football team is Purple Raiders are got something this year. Be a good test for the Irish. Yeah, they're, they're a good side. They're going to be uh, they're going to be fun to play against, and uh, we're going to have to we definitely have to bring our A game. Speaking of A games, you go. Oh, and Sebastian Sellers just flares one wide of the left post. Excellent run, excellent pass to free him up. Took a shot from there, almost exactly the shot that, that or where uh, Caden Hudson and Max Manarelli have scored from here in this second half there. Just outside. Kind of, they find a nice little seam in there. You know, they we do. found that little yeah. seam and then that little that alleyway and just been able to get balls into it and run onto them and That's done a nice job of finishing yeah. for the most part. 16 or 18 yard bullets. Three minutes to go, Irish. Let's see out the game. I want to keep the shutout intact. Yeah, right now you want to just take great pride in that and just get the ball out of here, keep it out of the, keep it out of the offensive third. And Okay to play a little, little deep if you have to. Oof. Oh, Yikes. there's a bit of individual skill there. Wow. Not celebrating it too much, but that was a wonderful goal. Struck with the outside of the right foot from about 27 yards or so out. And yeah, not much you can do with that one. No. That one's pretty much yeah. unsavable. That is uh, Dylan Bear, Teddy Dimmler. I don't care who you have Nobody's in there. Nobody's making that one. Nope. It almost looked like he toe balled it. That ball just kind of got up, dipped down, and curved off to the right. Excellent, excellent. Too bad. Like we spoke, jinxed him. We talked about just want to keep the take pride in the shutout. Yeah. We didn't count on a wonder strike from 25 plus <laughs> yards out. Slightly off the outside of the foot. Over the keeper. We're dipping in under the crossbar. Chances are you will not see a more beautiful goal scored by an opponent on this pitch this year. Yeah. Send Champagne Centennial home with a little, little bit, a little more endorphins than they normally would have had. Yeah, I'm a little. Let's make sure that's it, though. <laughs> Two minutes. We don't, we don't want to be that good a host. Declan Schuler, trying to get it back. Yep, he is not giving up a rampaging down that right side, and wreaking havoc. 
good job there by number 24 for the Irish. I think that was Graham. Yeah, Patrick Graham playing in the back. Jack Miller. Two freshmen hooking up there. Minute 20 to go. Irish seeing out this last 100 seconds. Bounds, Irish retain possession or regain possession rather. Minky with the throw in. Miller gets them all over to Tommy Graham. You know this still just don't take Tommy out of the game no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> just just feel better something, don't you, when you look back there? Mm -hmm. See Tommy back there? He even don't doesn't even have Nathan Oliver as partner in defense this year out there with him. But he's marshalling the youngsters. I think Cal Burke has played a good game too. Yeah, this he year has as a played freshman good like that. He has played a lot of minutes today too. He's been out there. Was in the starting lineup. All right, that's gonna see out this game. Irish 5-1 Big 12 conference victory against Champaign Centennial, the Chargers. Congratulate the Chargers on their effort. Uh, we hope uh, they have safe travels back. Everybody that traveled up to see them travels back also. Has a good time. Wish them luck in the rest of their season. Uh, we'll have a game here again against Danville on Thursday. We hope to see you all then. I'm Rob Kenny, signing off from a partner. Partners. Uh, up here on the, the board, Aaron Cunningham, Stephen Bradshaw, and my broadcast partner, Matt Blackford. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the game. I hope to see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.